Okay. <clears throat> All right. So a few things that we're talking about today. We're talking about your graduation requirements. We're talking about um, how to get re-motivated onto your capstone project. Uh, we're talking about a little bit about the presentation and what the presentation is going to look like. And then we're going to whip back again and we're going to talk about module two, which is this assignment that you're receiving today. Okay. So first of all, graduation requirements, 30 hours of work experience minimum. Module one is the capstone exploration piece. So exploring your capstone, the 10 to 15 hours towards that. Module two is the transition plan, which you have in front of you. Module three is the career prep, uh, sorry, the capstone presentation. Um, I don't know why I don't have a space between those words. I keep saying I'm gonna fix it, but I didn't. <laughs> but that's the four things you need to do for grad transitions. So is there anyone in here who has not completed the 30 hours? If you're not completed your 30 hours and have that signed off yet, the goal is to have you done and signed off by a career advisor by February. If you have a job or you've worked 30 hours, or I know you've got 30 hours of work experience, David, right? Yeah, you went through your program, no? Yeah, right? Um, you need to start that process now. You need to make sure that you are on the ball with that. So talking to Ms. Wispinski and Ms. Wong about what the plan is and how to get that going will be important. Check your report card. It will say if you've met or not met that requirement. Make sure it is correct, because if the report card is wrong, we have the wrong information, we need to fix it. If you need 30 hours of work experience, there are some ways you can stay connected to opportunities that you can get involved in. So the Student Bulletin posts opportunities, the Mosscrop Facebook group uh, posts opportunities there as well. That's the career education group, not the grad group. So there's two different ones. And the Mosscrop app is another place where we will send out notifications for opportunities if they arise. So be connected, but all in all, see Ms. Wispinski or Ms. Wong to find out what your plan is or to figure out what your plan is. <coughs> Otherwise, how are you connected? How many of you have the Mosscrop grad Facebook page and you get notifications from there? How many of you have the Mosscrop app and you're subscribed to Grade 12 All? How many of you are getting the student bulletin? How many of you, how many of you have all three? Ha <laughs> ha, gold star, gold star. <laughs> so I'm not really worried about the group of you who are sitting here in the library right now. I'm kind of worried about the kids that are not here. They're the ones who are not connected. So can we be good friends? Can we reach out and say, hey, did you go to the, to the module two presentation? If not, you're not connected. Get on one of these things so that you know what's going on. So we can reach out and we can help our friends stay connected and remind them to come pick up a project, that kind of thing. So let's support each other. In module one, I showed you this quote. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. This is the base idea for your capstone, the idea that we're moving into this world where we wanna be the authors of our own story. We wanna write our own autobiography and take charge of that. So think about um, how you are creating the story of your life journey. And that's what the capstone is about. It's about you wanting to do something and pursuing it. Remember the statistic? 85% of the jobs in year 2030 will be brand new, will have never existed before. So that's a pretty exciting yet scary statistic. Like you're thinking, wow, then what does that mean for me? And what is it gonna look like for my career? It means that you're the innovator. You are going to be creating these opportunities. That's, again, part of what you're doing for the capstone is a little piece of that, getting ready to learn how to pursue something and create something. So here's um, a review of the rationale behind the capstone. It's about developing your skills to be a lifelong learner. It's about being resourceful accessing the resources that you need to get to where you need to, be, to go. Feeling confident that you know how to navigate the world, your future. Remember I talked about the gig economy? Some people remember that. So if you don't remember what the gig economy is, it's the whole idea that in the future, it's not going to be nine to five Monday to Friday jobs. It's going to be you having a set of skills and marketing yourself to various organizations across industries and getting gigs, just like a band would get a gig, they get a gig at a restaurant, they get a gig at a, at a casino, they get a gig at a pub. They don't know what their next job is going to be, so they need to market themselves so that they are hired by different places. 
It's the same idea. You have a skill set, you will be hired by different places. Six months here, one year there, two months there. Maybe you want to take five months off. Fabulous. What a fabulous opportunity, right? So it's pretty exciting to think of this new way. For the healthy work-life balance, it's actually quite good. 10% of the workers in the United States right now are gig economy workers. And in the next five years, the prediction is that it's gonna climb exponentially. And I don't have the Canadian statistics for that, but this is where we're headed. Taking challenges head on is part of it, developing your core skills and competencies. So things like goal setting. So if you are learning to set a goal in your capstone, you are learning how to reach that goal and you're learning about how to adjust that goal. Research and media literacy, evaluating the resources that you are accessing, teamwork, Planning, planning is a big one. Your ability to set plans, follow plans, change them when necessary, and self-sufficiency. How is that piece going? You guys are not used to doing things on your own, right? I mean, like without somebody breathing down your neck. You meet your English teacher every second day and she says, you have an essay, how far are you? How well are you doing? Show me your draft, do this part, do that part. But in this project, you don't necessarily have that much breathing down your neck and that much guidance. So it's largely about self-sufficiency. It's largely about your ability to motivate yourself and to keep yourself on track. And that is hard, especially when you've gone through 12 years of schooling where we've bred you to be used to people pushing you to do things. But as soon as you leave high school, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be about you and your motivation. So really, this is just the beginning of you figuring that out. Oral communication, public speaking, you're going to be doing an oral presentation in April. You will get this experience. And when you think about having to market yourself, you're going to need this skill. You're going to need to be able to talk about yourself to other people and get people excited in the idea of hiring you. So core competencies, we are covering all of them, um, but especially focusing on critical thinking, personal awareness and responsibility. Remember, this is not just the list that a bunch of lame teachers made up. It's skills that people look for in the employment world, okay? That's where this comes from. So do you guys want to know a little bit about what some other people are doing? Do you guys know what your friends are doing for their capstone? A little, not really, right? Like, why aren't you guys talking about it? Talk to your friends and tell them about, ask them about their capstone. Be interested in what they're doing. But here are some examples of what um, some kids are doing. Some people are preparing to do something or to take on a certain kind of challenge. Some people are working on improving their knowledge and understanding of a certain content area. Some people are choosing to better themselves. So mental health, fitness, nutrition, those kinds of things. Some people are trying to make change. They're trying to make change in their community. They're trying to make change in their school or a larger community, the world, environment, those kinds of things. Some people decided that they have a skill that they really want to get better at. So they're working on improving that skill, mastering that skill, or learning a brand new skill, right? I didn't have this skill before, but now I want it. So now I'm going out and I'm going to try and gain that skill. Um, lots of people are creating things. I've been using yours as an example, Dave. Is that okay? Okay, good, because all throughout I've been talking about it. But creating things, so like apps, game designs. Um, David is doing um, art with uh, sheet metal and welding techniques. So there are lots of different things being created. Giving back, so philanthropic activities um, or volunteerism as well. So there's lots of different things people are doing. Ask each other, talk to each other, talk about yours, ask about theirs, get interested, get supportive. Um, it, it's motivating to hear about other people's excitement as well and to be able to talk about yours um, to do that. But remember, whatever you chose for your capstone, it needs to be something that you want to do. Something you're motivated to do. Self-motivated to do. Because if it's not exciting to you, you're not going to be motivated to complete it. It needs to be something you really want for yourself. Another question to ask yourself. Is your capstone manageable? Or is it too big? Is it challenging enough? Or is it not challenging enough? So you have to navigate for yourself what that means and your level of manageable but challenging is different than the person sitting next to you. 
You can't compare yourself to somebody else. It depends on your circumstances, what you're dealing with, and how much you can um, handle. So keep that in mind. And it's flexible like that, which is really good. Um, manageable yet challenging. The expectation is not that you work on your capstone every day. Once a week is kind of like a base guideline. Okay? And if you work on it once a week, it means you're staying connected to it. If you're not and you're having big gaps of period of time in between when you work on your capstone, you really lose that connection to it and what's going on and that motivation. So keep it as your base guideline. And if you haven't started yet, it's time to start. So how do we start? Um, number one is you're gonna read the response that I make to give to your proposal. Not a lot of you received an email with my response in it yet, but yesterday I had the request for, to send you guys back your actual response, your proposal. You received that, yes, 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 you saw it, some of you saw it, no? So it should be in the email that you gave to me in your proposal, so I sent your words back to you so that you have a copy of it. So you can look at it and go, okay, what did I write? What was my plan? What was my goal and all that kind of stuff. Um, I am navigating a busy world of teaching grade 11s and teaching grade 12s. So this year I've got 300 CLC grade 11s and 300 grade 12 students. And in November, when you were submitting your capstone proposals, I also had 600 grade 11 assignments submitted. So I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? So I'm much farther behind than I would like to be, but I am working my way through reading them and thank goodness I enjoy reading them because I will be reading them over the holidays and sending you guys um, responses as they are done. Okay, so take a look for that, but don't wait, start. Like you're not waiting for my email, you're starting your capstone, you're getting going. Um, in the email, you may see that either your capstone was approved or I may have said it was pending. Pending just means that there's some questions that I have, um, we need to um, identify the real focus and direction of what you're doing before I can deem it as approved. But everyone is beginning, nobody is waiting, okay? Um, and in that case, if it's pending, you may need to respond just by sending me an email um, to respond to the questions that I ask you. In my response to your proposal, I usually um, give you some feedback. I might give you some suggestions on how to move forward, um, that kind of thing. I might have some questions to make you think a little bit more. That's what you're looking for in the proposal. See me. Does it look like me? <laughs> Wait, that's what I have to go on camera for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so it, it's not really me, it's I stole it from the internet, but, <laughs> and then yes, many people have pointed out that my shirt says thug life, and <laughs> I didn't realize that, so yeah, but anyways, it was the closest I can find to me, but what I'm trying to say is, please come and see me at least once about your, your capstone, I want to touch base with every grade 12 student at least one-on-one -on -one and have that conversation, and some of you will come more than once, which is fantastic, but if you haven't been up to talk to me yet, come at least before February. And then how do we really like, how do we get this going again? So term one probably hit you by storm, right? It was pretty crazy in the end, getting things needed to get done for that term one finish, applying to post-secondary school scholarships, applications, those kinds of things. So now that you see how busy grade 12 life is, you may need to reevaluate your goals, right? And um, reassess them, reset them. But where should you start right now? How do you get going again? How do you get back connected and excited about what you're doing? Number one, make sure that you have connected with your adult mentor. And I'll plug the word adult. It needs to be an adult. Because a fellow student, which is what some of you said, a student was your mentor, is good for guiding you and teaching you the skills or the knowledge that they might have that you are looking for, but they can't guide you like an adult. An adult has wisdom, knowledge, experience, and will definitely give you a different kind of support. So if you're one of the ones who needs an adult mentor and you don't have one yet, you can come see me, we can talk it through. Sometimes I've been able to connect people with others, um, but I can't guarantee that, but at least I can give you some ideas of where to look and where to go. You should have met with your adult mentor once already. If not, that's something for you to do this week. Action log and timeline. You now have your proposal in your email. You can go back and look at it. What was the timeline you set for yourself? When did you want to have certain things done by? How often did you want to work on it? Reassess that too. Because like I said, now that you see how busy grade 12 is, you may need to go, oh, I thought I'd have that done by now, but I don't. So now I need to 
change that timeline. The action log you should be filling out. The action steps, so make sure you know clearly what's your step number one, step number two, step number three, and the timeline for that. And they should be re directly related to the goal. Remember that you need to be documenting along the way. Documentation should not be a huge process. It should not be like an extra huge amount of work. It should be natural. Um, but you do need to, like if I said to you, show me where your skill level is right now, show me what you can do right now or what you know right now, you should be able to show me that. If you're like, oh, I can't really do that. What can I show you? I don't really have anything yet. Then you need to think about that and you need to, that's the first thing you need to do is assess that and be able to show that so that you can show the growth and change. Assess and reassess along the way. That's part of the learning and make sure that it is manageable but challenging enough to help you grow as a person because there's no point in doing anything unless you're experiencing personal growth. The capstone is not for me to feel good about. It's for you to learn and grow from. So you'll get out of it what you put into it. Something I noticed in the proposals is that sometimes these things don't relate. The goal is completely different than the question. The action steps, I have no idea how they're gonna help you meet the goal. So can you please double check yours and make sure that all of these things relate? Example that I give is um, my goal was to improve my auditioning skills. My question was what makes a good audition? Totally related. My action steps, also related. I wanted to do some research. So I was gonna research a little bit about what makes a good audition. I was going to interview an actor to find out their experiences with auditioning. And I was actually gonna go out and audition for something. Those were my three clear action steps. How do I document those things? Whatever's natural. So when I'm researching, I'm learning. So obviously I'm gonna take notes about what I'm learning to capture that learning, okay? When I'm interviewing the person, I've got my list of interview questions as part of my documentation, but I also might want to transcribe what the person said or take a video while of the interview and then I could actually take pieces of that video and show it in my presentation afterwards. Um, and when I go and audition, how do I document that? Well, I could take a picture of myself while I'm there and maybe after, but I can't do it while I'm auditioning. So maybe I go home and I do a reflective journal entry on what that was all like for me and what, what happened. So it should be natural, and this is, none of that is too big, right? It's not a massive extra thing that you're adding on to yourself. So ask yourself, do you need to scale back a little bit? Is your goal a bit too big? Or is it too small? Will you accomplish it too quickly? If you finish your goal in the next week or two, perhaps you didn't set it big enough, so you need to extend it a little bit. Two minute video I'm gonna show you for some inspiration for your capstone. If this 10 year old girl can do it, so can you. She got excited about um, a dance called the dubstep and she decided to learn it and this is what came of it. I first started about seven, eight months ago. It all began from a report for Michael Jackson and I went on the internet and I fell upon dancing the dubstep and I just started practicing and going on from there. I just go on YouTube, look up random stuff like how to dubstep or how to pop and mop. And to learn the move, I usually watch the video over and over and over. <laughs> I probably watch like millions until I figure out how they do it. you by rewinding, pausing, doing all that stuff because you can watch it over and over again, but in a classroom, you can't do that. On 
honestly, because I've learned this whole thing from the internet, and the internet is my generation to learning these things. I think I can show people that you can do anything if you really have a passion for it. on her own like there's so much potential for something that you are truly interested in and to really just fly with whatever that is and allow yourself to pursue it wholeheartedly um so let's go back to some reminders then about things that you should be doing so the action log you should be filling out as you're doing your capstone when you're talking to people or doing your research you should be jotting that down it does not need to be onerous you don't have to write down every little itty bitty five minute ten minute twenty minute thing you can combine things i just want to get a general idea for what it is you're doing and how much effort is being put in okay there's a, a column for resources used if it was a website or a youtube video or a blog or a book you will keep track of those resources used but sometimes you're doing things where you're just working, like if you're just creating, there's no resource in that necessarily, so you don't have to put anything that's not applicable. It is broken up into action step one, two, and three, but if that doesn't work for you in that, you can re, like you can format it how you want as long as I can see clearly what it is you're doing, okay? Um, the mentor guide was also attached to that original project, but if you've misplaced these things, I have extra copies here, um, also on the Mosscraft website, I'll show you where they are but you should have recorded who your mentor is and that very first meeting. And I'll give you an example afterwards of what that might look like. So the whole point when we're talking about your capstone is, yeah, I think everyone's in the same boat. They feel like they fell off the boat, <laughs> right? Um, and now's the time to get back onto that boat or back onto that horse or whatever analogy you wanna use. And remember to start where you are. Use what you have and do what you can, okay? That's it. And that should be, that should ease your mind a little bit and go, okay, I don't have to kick myself in the butt to say, dang it, I, I messed up and now I'm going to fail. And no, you just get back going again. Okay. So let's flip forward to the presentation. So this is the module three piece, which we meet again in March in the same manner, right? During your spare block. Um, we meet again to prepare you for that presentation. Um, but let's talk about right now, what it is you're going to be talking about. So first of all, you're going to talk about yourself. Who are you? And you're also going to talk about what are you proud of? So this is your opportunity to actually bring in two to three things that might not have anything to do with your capstone, but that are part of who you are and you want to showcase those things, things that you're proud of. So bring two, two or three items in with that. And your ability to talk about yourself is so important because you do that in interviews. You will be doing that as you're marketing yourself in this, in this um, new economy. Um, you're going to talk about your capstone journey, which is going to be a huge chunk of your presentation. You're talking about what was your goal and what was your question? How did you pursue it? What were the challenges along the way and the changes that you had to make? What did you learn about the topic? What did you learn about yourself? Transition plans for after high school. What is next year going to look like? What are the possible future options that you are considering? And then reflect on being a lifelong learner. So, and all of the core competencies. So how are you showing that you have the skills that the core competency talks about? Um, how are the skills that you demonstrated in your capstone, how does that help with showing that you are a lifelong learner? Wait, what is a lifelong learner? A lifelong learner is learning for learning's sake. Nobody's telling you to do it. It's something you want to know or something you need to know or do and you go out and you pursue it. That is a lifelong learner. And it must be visual in some way. So last year we had everybody talking through a bunch of PowerPoint slides. Don't do that. You can use PowerPoint as sort of like a piece of it as a backup, but it needs to be your conversation with the audience um, and use some creativity. So like I was just talking to somebody they said, well, what if I did like a TED talk? Absolutely, that's the idea. Um, be creative. For me, with my example of auditioning, uh, my creative idea for my presentation would be to present in the format of audi uh, an audition, just like I was going to do an audition. So try and incorporate maybe some of that. There's also a graphic um, on the website and on the back of your original um, 
capstone project. And it says 101 ways to show what you know. So there's 101 ways to be creative about how you show us what you learned, okay? So the presentations are April 18th from 2 to 3 p.m. Yes, no surprise there. We all know that's happening. All right, let's flip back now. Let's look at what's in front of you. We're gonna go through this project so that you guys know exactly what it is you have to do, exactly what it is you have to hand in. I've got two samples down from six. Thieves, you bunch of thieves, you great fellas are. Don't take these away. <laughs> this is for you to see exactly what the project is gonna look like in the end. And your module two is a transition plan. It is your preparation for talking about your transition plan in your presentation. Do January 9th and 10th, hand it into your English 12 teacher. If you do not have English 12, then you hand it in to me, okay? Ninth, the 9th is a day two, the 10th is a day one, so depending on when your English class lands. So when you talk about your transition plan, this is what I wanna see, right? I wanna hear that when you're finished high school, you're going to post-secondary. I wanna know what post-secondary program you're going to, and then when you finish that program, what kind of a job you're gonna get into, and then how long you're gonna work before you retire, right? Bless you. Does that sound about right? I'm giving you a hint. No! <laughs> it's not what I'm expecting, because a typical journey in life will look like this. Perhaps you finish high school and you take a year off to work and then you decide to go back and do a post-secondary program. And then after a couple of years of post-secondary program, you realize you don't like this program. So you change your mind, you try a new program. And then you finish that, you get out, you get a job that might not even be related to the program you just did. And then you decide to go back to BCIT because you want to get some technical training and get into the real industry that you want to get into. And you're doing this exploration and this is actually can be a very good thing because when you're living life this way, it means that you are open-minded. You are leaving yourself available and mindful to what is happening in the moment. And you're making decisions based on that, not the, oh, I'm supposed to go A to B to C to D to E. I'm supposed to do that. So live, experience, change, grow, all of those things. So when you're doing your transition plan here and you're talking about the options for your future, know that I don't expect that. I want to know options and ideas. I don't expect you to know exactly what it is you're doing. So keep that in mind. If you do and you know you're pretty clear, like you've got a passionate idea of what it is you want to do, fantastic. But none of these is better than the other. So what is on the transition plan? So take a look at the very front page of the transition plan. It has a checklist in the bottom left corner. That's what this A to F are here. And that little checklist goes through each aspect that you will include, that's okay, in your transition plan. A capstone progress report, a photocopy of your action log, a photocopy of your mentor guide, a graduation transition plan summary, a budget for the first year at high school, and a resume with a resume guide. That's it, that's what you include in here. And you see the sample right in front of you, that's exactly what your project is gonna look like, stapled together and handed in. Let's go through each of these pieces so that you know what they are about. So first of all, your project must be typed. It must be professional looking, okay? Answer all of the questions in there, do a thorough job. Make sure that you edit your project for spelling and grammar and those little baby eyes that should be capitalized, okay? All of those kinds of things. A clear title page. Page two is the capstone progress report. By the way, this is exactly the sample that's going around on the desks, is also posted on the MOSCOP website, this example, okay? One paragraph. How's it going in your capstone? What have you done? What do you need to do? What challenges have you come across? How are you documenting it? How will you show your final representation piece? And do you have any feedback for me as how I can help you so far? One paragraph. Next, action log. Photocopy this, please. You need to keep the original because you have to keep logging your actions. Um, this is kind of what an example looks like, but I don't expect you to have all the boxes filled out. That's not the expectation. Um, some of you might need an extra page, but some of you will not need the whole page. That's okay. I just want to see what you've done. 
Um, again, the resources, if you don't have a resource, you just put not applicable. There is a spot for a mentor or parent initials just to um, verify that yes, my child, son or daughter or child has done these things. Um, and it's broken up into the three steps, if that's helpful. So if you need a copy of this, you can download it off the Moss Club website. The next page is the mentor guide. The mentor guide, I wanna see just your first initial meeting with your mentor, okay? So tell me who your me mentor is, and then a little bit about their background, and give me a description of your first meeting. So you can see my mentor, great mentor. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> it always takes a little while for some of you. I'm gonna give you another 10 seconds for that to kick in. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, people. This is supposed to be for a good laugh. Great mentor. Great mentor. Great mentor. Ah, oh, okay. We're alive. We're, we're alive. Like, I know, me too. Here. Me too. Do you know how much energy it takes me to stand up here 10 times? Uh, I, I am in holiday mode too, and I'm, I fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what I say. Okay. So, um, Greatman is my mom's work colleague. I gave a little bit of background information. He's a part time teacher and a part time actor. He has years of experience in acting for film and TV and commercials. He teaches drama. He has a, a BFA from SFU, et cetera, et cetera. So, I'm giving you a background of who this person is. You give me a background of who your person is, okay? And then I give you some information about the description of our first meeting. So at our first meeting, he told me about his background in history. I told him about my capstone. He suggested some resources for me to look at, so a great book. He also told me about an, an auditioning weekend workshop. He gave me some suggestions for what to look for when researching. He told me there's a difference between auditioning for film and TV and auditioning for theater. Ah, that's important for me to know as I pursue my research, okay? My next meeting is gonna be in January. A little blurb, got it? Next page is the transition plan. One page, four paragraphs. One page, four paragraphs. That's not intimidating, right? Paragraph one, what are the options and ideas that you have? Paragraph two, what are your personal skills and the things that have influenced you to consider those options and ideas? Paragraph three, what are your plans for the first year after high school? So right now, what's the ideal plan for you? Okay, knowing that that might change. Paragraph four um, talks about health goals. What are the health goals you have for stress, for fitness, for um, nutrition? Next. If you do not have enough background research yet into what your options are, these are some websites that you can access that can give you information to help you explore your options. So myblueprint.ca, you can create an account, you can search careers, you can look at post-secondary programs, you can know which post-secondary programs lead to what careers, you can look at tuition costs and even labor market trends and outlook, all of those kinds of things right on my blueprint. You can even complete some assessments there so that it, my blueprint can suggest for you some career options. So then you have an idea of, okay, well, these are some things that I can look at. Workbc.ca, a database of a ton of career opportunities, fantastic two to three minute videos that teach you about that career opportunity. Links also to post-secondary educationplanner.ca, which is where all of your BC post-secondary information needs are met. Go there, check it out, see what they have to offer, okay? So all of these places are places you go, all on the Mosscrop website. All right, so we're gonna talk about the budget. So take a look in your package at the budget. And this is where you might wanna have a pencil out to take some notes about what I say, because not all of this um, is necessary for everyone. <laughs> but some of it I do want to see from everyone. So you need to know the difference of what does Mrs. Datto say we have to include and what does not need to be included. So we're gonna start by looking at the expenses and what to think about. Number one, and this by the way is for the first year after high school. This is not for this year. This is for what you think you will ideally be doing for the first year out of high school. Tuition, courses, books, and supplies. If you're not going to post-secondary school or a training institute, then you do not have tuition fees. You can put zero. But if you are, 
you need to put that information there. Do you make up a number? Absolutely not. You need to go onto the website, onto the internet, you need to go to that post-secondary school's website and you need to find that information. Is it easy to find tuition information? Yeah. Is it? Good. Some, everyone can refer to him for help because some post-secondary schools make finding tuition really difficult. Why? They don't want you to see how much it costs. They want you to fall in love with the program first and then find out how much it costs. Um, so they really do make it difficult. But here is a tip. You might want to write this down. If you're looking for tuition information on a website, you can't find it. There's always a search bar at the top right-hand corner usually of that post-secondary school's website. In there, plug in tuition plus fees. And I guarantee you probably won't get it popping up immediately. You'll have to click a few more places before you actually get to the fees. Um, but it's, you need to do the research and put in the effort to find that, okay? Some schools like UBC, they have a cost calculator. You can go right on there and they'll calculate your cost for the program that you're going, residence and all that kind of stuff, very helpful. But other schools like BCIT, they just don't post it at all. You might need to call them and ask them to send it to you, okay? So do your research, but also my blueprint, the website that I showed you guys, they have a team of people who, whose job it is, is to extract tuition information from the post-secondary school's website and put it in a beautiful package little area in my blueprint so that you just have to click on that program and find out all the information you need to know. So it's an option to go to as well. Rent and residence, if you're living on campus somewhere, you need to show, you need to find that information too about how much the rent is for residence. For tuition and rent residence for post-secondary schools, please print a copy of the page that you found the information on and attach that into your transition plan. Now, there should be an example in there as well of what that looks like. Just print out the page and attach it in. Who's living at home next year? Some of you will not need to pay anything because parents will not make you pay for rent, but some of you will live at home and contribute to rent. So I do not want to know your family's rent I don't want to know what they pay. I don't want to know their income. I don't want to know their expenses. This is about you and your portion as you guesstimate it for next year. Guesstimate is a guess estimate, right? So if your parents are making you pay, how much are they making you pay? This requires a conversation with them, okay? So have that conversation. Um, if not, a zero in there is okay. Next, utilities, gas and electricity. Do you know how much your parents pay for gas and electricity? Have you ever looked at the bill? Um, looking at your blank eyes? This term nobody has, right? Ask. They may ask you to contribute to that. If so, put your portion. If not, the zero is okay, but do ask them and find out. It's good to know. Welcome to the adult world. Food. So food, you might wanna write groceries question mark beside that. Your family may not be asking for any contributions to groceries. In that case, um, that's okay, but if you are, what is your portion for groceries for the year? Also, it's not just groceries. So what about when you're in post-secondary school or at work and you wanna buy lunch? What about when you wanna grab a coffee? Those kinds of things. So you might wanna jot that down there too. Lunch, question mark, coffee, question mark. How much are you going to budget for those kinds of things? Now, if your parents are gonna give you money for that, hey, I need $20 for lunch today or this week or whatever, and your parents go, here you go, I still want to see it here. I want to see your cost here. But there's a spot on this side in the income for funding from family, and you just add up everything your family gives you and put it in here. Everything that makes sense, right? So now we're looking at volunteer program total cost. So volunteer program is if you are taking a gap year, a gap period of time, you want to go overseas to another country to volunteer. That costs money. I can show you some resources to look into some programs. Um, that you can use. If you're not doing that, it's zero. Transportation. How many of you are going to post-secondary school next year? How many in BC? Okay, so BC has a U-Pass. Do you guys know what a U-Pass uh, is? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, yeah. yeah. So for those of you who don't know, it's a transit pass, a universal transit pass. You actually are paying for it. It's built into your tuition fees, but it gives you access to the bus, the SkyTrain, the C-Bus, anything to do with transit while you're in school. 
So you, you, you have a card that you get and you do that. But when you're not in school, like in April or in December or in June, July, August, during the summer months, if you're not doing summer semester, then you need to purchase your own um, student e-pass. Yeah. E-pass, e like, if you're going to college too? Yeah, so a lot of the colleges have it as well. Yeah, so know that that's available and use it. Save you some money, right? Um, so transportation may only be working out those periods of time when you don't have a U-Pass available. So anybody thinking about borrowing a family car or buying a car or, yeah, maybe? Okay, so think about when you're thinking about having a car, you're thinking about the cost of the car if necessary. You're thinking about gas. You're thinking about insurance, which is upwards of $3,000 for a new driver, 3,000 a year. Um, remember how much gas costs too. Ask your parents about this, they'll tell you how much they pay. And then don't forget about parking. Do you know how expensive it is to park at a university or a college? It's expensive. So think about that, look into the fees of that as well if that is something you're considering. And don't forget about maintenance fees, who's paying those? So clothing, think about how much you pay for clothing now. And then next year, remember that you will be in a different school or getting a job or working, those kinds of things. You will need some more clothes, right? Um, so maybe t think of what you spend now on clothing, shoes, hats, jackets, tops, pants, all those things, and then increase it a little bit for next year while, when you create your budget. If your parents are paying for clothing, I still wanna see you budget that out, but you include it in here. Personal hygiene is like your shaving cream, your razors, your haircuts, your um, toothpaste and toothbrushes and that kind of thing. Portion out your portion of that, even if your parents are paying for it, again, use the funding from family. Medical and dental. If you're going to post-secondary school next year, most likely that your parents' extended health stays with you. So you don't have to pay for your dental visits or your um, a lot of your prescription medication, that kind of thing. However, if you're not going to school, you are no longer on extended health and now you have to pay for those things. So think about that as well and what the costs might be. Entertainment. Same as clothing. Think about how much you spend on entertainment now, buying an app or a computer game or a video game. Think about how much you spend on movies and bowling and whatever else you do with your friends. Um, and then think about next year, you're a little bit freer, right? You're a little bit, woohoo! So you might be spending a little bit more money on the entertainment costs. So budget that out as well. Internet, yeah, that's usually shared in the home, but I'd like you to know, so put a star beside that one. Yeah, I want you to know how much your internet at home costs. And cell phone, know how much your cell phone costs, but add up everything that your family is actually providing for you and include it in the funding from family section. Okay, so that's the worst part, that's the expenses. Let's talk about the fun part, which is the income. What's coming in? Cash and savings, not your family's cash and savings, your own. You need to be able to assess where you're starting from. Employment income, who has a job right now? Great, who's gonna get a job next year? Okay, who's gonna maintain their job at, or get a job, like lots of you, right? So your, income estimation for employment income is not based on now. It's based on the job you're gonna get next year. So you have to think about what am I going to be doing next year? How much money am I gonna be making? How many hours will I be working? And then you're gonna do that mathematical equation to find out for the year what the income might possibly be. Then you're gonna look at, are you getting student loans? Have you applied to awards and scholarships? Everyone says, but I don't know if I'm gonna get an award or a scholarship. We don't find out until like May or June. I know that, but you know what you've applied to and you can guess or put what you hope. And if, it, if you wanna put a question mark at the end of that, that's fine. But try to guess on what you might get. Um, again, funding from family is clear. Other income is like birthdays, Hanukkah, Christmas, um, Chinese New Year, whatever gifts you might possibly get. Perhaps you're using some head nods. Um, perhaps you're, you're mowing the lawn for neighbors and every weekend and making money from that or babysitting and you're making money from that. So other income falls in that category, All right? And then you get this really interesting comparison between what money might be coming in and what money is probably going out and do you have enough? 
or do you have to adjust work hours and schedule or the amount that the expenses that you have so it'll give you a really good idea for that notice at the bottom there's a spot for parent signature parents should guardians adults who know your situation should be involved in this conversation about what should go on your budget because they have insights for you that you do not might not understand yet okay so that is that and then the last part of your transition plan is your resume so your resume how many of you have uh, not touched your resume since planning 10 phew there are some people who put their hands up believe me or not your resume needs to be updated it needs to be refreshed it needs to be error free and beautiful how do you do that I provided you with this resume guide use this resume guide to sit down with your resume and to go through the checklist to make sure that your resume meets the criteria okay that is the first thing that you need to do it's two pages the first page is all about the content and what's on your resume and the second page is the formatting spacing language and design of your resume all right so let's make our resumes really solid before you leave us here at Mossgrab get you noticed in the world because that one piece of paper is what makes someone go I want to meet this person or I don't want to meet this person right so there's a lot of things on there so make sure that you've done that and before you hand it in to me as a finished copy the rule is let three people see it your parents your sister a friend whoever it is show it to three different people because we become blind to our own errors and we, we can't see them for some reason but when somebody else looks at it they can point out what we've done right or wrong on there and they can give us make sure that it is perfect and error free all right um, the first two days of January when we come back from the holidays is a good time for you to come in with that refreshed resume that you've gone through already just to get a final eye on it if you want me to okay and that's it that's that's the whole transition plan those six pieces so you're going to attach that resume guide so look at the um, example there and you see that it actually physically has the resume guide in there so I want to see that you've used it and checked it off um, better than that for assessment this is really blurry but on the little little front of your assignment you can see maybe I'll show the camera really good. you can see that in the front of your assignment there's a little draft assessment there it's a four-point scale and it's um, either you've exceeded expectations you've met them you're minimally meeting or you're approaching and if you're only approaching expectations so far you don't pass the assignment and if you don't pass the assignment you don't graduate from high school because it's part of the requirement I want you to graduate so I give you another opportunity to to complete it well but just do it right the first time and then we won't have to do that okay so follow the instructions and put in the proper effort to make sure that you do a good job um, it's the end of the day it's my last presentation so I won't show you this video but this isn't a <laughs> hot David don't act too enthused okay um, the video is only three minutes long anyhow but you can watch it online it's another inspirational video to help get you excited about your capstone and what you're doing but in review spend 30 minutes a week once a week on your capstone stay connected to it um, and build that knowledge over time make sure that you've met with your mentor now fill out the mentor log and the action log complete module two that's what this is complete this hand it in in January to your English 12 teacher or to me if you don't have English 12 you're already connected so let's say get your friends connected okay anyone you know who hasn't picked this up or hasn't come to see me or hasn't attended one of these workshops nudge them a little bit to say yeah why don't you go download it from the Mosscraft website or grab one from Mrs. Datto um, let's support each other and make sure nobody gets left behind and then make sure that you come and see me at least once in the next month and a half before February ish um, that I get to at least talk with you one-on-one -on -one, and I will stick around here for any of you who want to have that conversation now and just get you going on your capstone and what you're doing okay that's what it looks like on the calendar we come back on the 7th it's due on the 9th and the 10th so it's pretty quick when we come back from there you're free David
<laughs> you can leave or you can stay and chat with me for two minutes about what you're doing. Um, the sample is available on the website. Oh, you know what, guys? I do want to show you one thing, though. The website, which is the question. So you go to the MossGraph website, you go to students, you go to grad transitions, and then in here are everything you need for each module. So module one, the capstone project, if you lost the original project, here's the handout. Here's the link to the proposal, to submit your proposal, the action log, mentor log, the PowerPoint, and YouTube video like I'm doing right now. I'm filming this video. I filmed the first one, so if you want to watch it again to recap what it is your capstone should be about, um, et cetera. Uh, other resources, important due dates, et cetera. Module two is what you have right now. Uh-oh, you lost your assignment? No worries. Go to the MozCraft website and download it here, module two transition plan. For those of you who have friends who did not make it and did not pick up a project over the holidays, they can go here and get it, okay? The example, so your question was, is the example on the website? There it is right there. The budget, if you want a good copy, download a copy of the budget so you can do your good copy on there. A guide, if you're lost when you're doing your budget, it can kind of guide you along the way. Another copy of the action log, mentor guide, and if you're taking a gap year next year, part of your transition plan is to read this short little article about taking a gap year, and that's the link to it there. Remember I showed you the three websites? There they are. If you forget what they are and you wanna access them, okay? And then um, module three, the presentation piece will be updated as we go along, but you can even just see like from last year, I left everything up, all the preparation materials, so you could take a look at what was there last year if you're curious or interested. Now you're free. And I'm free too, yay! Mm -hmm. Have an absolutely fantastic holidays. Enjoy with family, friends, whatever you guys might be doing. And um, come and talk to me right now if you want to chat about your capsule. Um.